and gentlemen, please welcome on stage Brian Solis, Head of Global Innovation, ServiceNow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sticking around until the end. My name is Brian Solis. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. I join you from Silicon Valley, California. I'd like to talk about something that I don't think has come up much today. Artificial intelligence? But I'm going to talk about it from a different perspective. As a practicing digital futurist and digital anthropologist, what's most fascinating to me about artificial intelligence is not just the technology, it's how technology changes behaviors and then how those behaviors change everything else. Just three years ago, going back 20 years before that, one of the main topics that I wrote about was digital Darwinism. It was looking at how every technological revolution, PCs, smartphones, Web 2.0 and social media, cryptocurrencies, NFTs, Web 3.0, how every single cycle of disruption pushed businesses in new directions. This is a quote from my friend Jorge Paulo Lemon, very successful businessman. And one day, we were talking about big data before the days of AI, and he quoted this, I'm a terrified dinosaur. This is before AI. And so just a few short years ago, everyone said that we need to be digital first that our goal was to become a technology company. Every company must become a technology company. And so that led to the rise of digital transformation. But as an analyst, and in retrospect, it didn't really lead to much transformation. It led to a whole lot of digitization, which was just simply taking yesterday's processes and digitizing them for today. We were constantly reacting to market evolution. But if anybody in the audience has played football or watches football, you know that no good player runs to where the ball is. The greatest players run to where they need the ball to be. And they will that ball in that direction in order to do their work. Because there's not enough time to keep reacting to trends. Innovation cycles are only accelerating. ChatGPT joined us in the end of 2022, barely over a year, and look at how much disruption and change it's causing. But generative AI isn't the only thing that's pushing us forward. With Apple and its Vision Pro, spatial computing is here, robotics, is here. I sent this out at Christmas time saying, Merry Christmas from Skynet. We're seeing drone delivery now in consumer homes. Walmart is actually launching bigger pilot programs for this in the rural counties of Dallas, Texas. So all kinds of change is happening. And if we keep trying to react to every evolution, will be further and further behind. The main AI pen. It's a standalone device and software platform built from the ground up for AI. Engagement comes through your voice, touch, gesture, the laser ink display. Play the song, How Music Makes You Feel Better. Weather, the date, how much protein, these almonds have 15 grams of protein. How much is this online? This is $28 online. We'll tap. Staying in the moment and generating a gorgeous image. That exists today for 699 US dollars. Imagine what we'll see by this time next year. What I'd like to introduce to you today as the previous panel shared, is to open your mind. To open your mind to new opportunities, but not just to embrace AI, 
not just to experiment in pockets of your organization with AI, but to have a complete mind shift about what it is that you can do with AI. And this is a monumental moment. We can talk about it this time next year to get ahead of all of the change that's coming. There's not even enough time for change management. There's only time now for innovation. Because every true innovation changes behaviors. And I want you to think about that for a moment. When you got an iPhone or a Droid, it changed your behaviors. In fact, maybe it makes us <laughs> behave too much and spend too much time on the device. Apple's Vision Pro is going to change behaviors. As you saw with Humane's AI pin, it's changing behaviors. And so what we have with generative AI and general artificial intelligence behind it is a new renaissance. And how fitting that that renaissance starts here in the city that gave birth to the renaissance. AI isn't just going to make you do better work, faster, more efficiently, less expensively. It's actually going to unlock an incredible new potential and possibility that we couldn't see before. Every executive that I work with is prioritizing investments in generative AI and automation, and they need to. Automation is the box we need to check. Cost takeout is the bo box we need to check. But if we only limit AI to automation, we'll have missed the greatest promise and its greatest opportunity. We must also understand how innovation is changing markets, how AI is reshaping behaviors so that we can unlock unprecedented access to intelligent systems and to challenge our fundamental business assumptions. Basically, business as usual is not the model of which we're going to get the most out of AI. This is a chart that I'm sure will bring joy to everyone's day. It, it estimates the year in which AI will take over jobs by discipline. So we'll just forward that. If you want that slide, I've asked the team to send this whole deck to you after the conference. I want you to think about it this way. The difference in performance between ChatGPT 3.5 and 4.0 is 10x. We're on 4.0 right now. Its estimated IQ with 4.0 is about 155. For comparison, Einstein was estimated to have an IQ of somewhere between 165 and 180. When ChatGPT 5 arrives, understanding that its growth could be 10x, what would its IQ be? What would it be at 6.0, 7.0? And now what we start to see is that we need to change the narrative. By keeping humans in the center of all of this, it isn't just about to automate their work, it's about to augment their work. It makes them more capable, more powerful, and it means that as leaders, as executives, as decision makers, we have to explore the unknown. We don't know yet how to make employees more exponential, but those who figure it out are the winners because AI is a cognitive exoskeleton that makes you smarter, stronger, faster, and more capable. We are the engineers, we are the architects of the future to create an exponential employee, exponential processes, exponential models that will outperform any automated business. Instead of digital first, this may now be a moment to become AI first. Where not just every company is becoming a technology company, every company is becoming an intelligent company. Every company can become an exponential company. 
those companies that leverage AI are doing so most effect effectively by challenging their own business assumptions. You can't run tomorrow's business on yesterday's talent. You can't run tomorrow's business with yesterday's models and thinking. You can't plug tomorrow's talent into yesterday's operating model. This is that moment. If there ever was a moment to rethink our models, to rethink our vision, to rethink where we can go and why. Because the numbers are already there. Higher performance, greater profitability, greater margins, faster growth rates. It's really now about our imagination, our ability to dream, our ability to be the artists in this era's renaissance. It's about creating net new value because that's the actual definition of innovation. Otherwise, it's iteration, which is just doing the same things better, faster, at scale, more efficient. You need both. Because if you embrace both, you become the disruptor. By becoming exponential, you become the market disruptor. So there's what we know, and this is driving and fueling a lot of AI decisions today. We're going to try it here, we're going to pilot it here, we're going to scale it here, we're going to learn here, and this is good. We need to do this. But at the same time, we have to understand what we know we don't know, right? So we know we might not have all the answers. We might not know that we have access to new types of possibilities, but we know that. So by being an optimist, by being open-minded, we can now start to answer this question. What we don't know, we don't know. Because it's chasing this that reveals answers, opportunities, possibilities, pilots, experiments that help us understand what we didn't know, what we didn't even know to ask, what we didn't even know to think about, what we didn't know to pilot. The irony here is that we could probably ask ChatGPT what we should do next. It's partially a joke. These five letters have been inspiring my work over the last year plus. W, W, A, I, D. What would AI do? Every decision you make is based on a presumption of a model that has existed for some time. It's also about the decisions that we're not making because we don't know to think about them yet. In every decision, with humans at the center, it's about using that cognitive exoskeleton to partner with AI to do what we didn't know we could do. It's a powerful unlock. By becoming AI first, it means that we prioritize the use of AI in shaping business models, products, and services. It influences every decision from the problems we choose to solve to the way it interacts with customers and employees and also to the new types of products and services we didn't even know we could introduce or create. It is a powerful foundation for innovation if we choose to be in front of it, to imagine it. This is Mogadot, when he said that that's the end of innovation done by our brains, because the smartest person in the room is the one that invents everything and makes all the decisions. For now, we can use AI to make the decisions. The moment that AI makes decisions for us, we're now at a cognitive enterprise. It's the next phase beyond the augmented enterprise. And I'd like for you to think about this. How do we arm ourselves with AI to become the smartest person in the room to invent and create? Because we have seen historically that when we iterate, at best we're on a path towards automation, and that drives linear growth. 
But when we think about augmentation, just like the growth between ChatGPT 3.5 and 4.0, we lead to augmented growth, which creates disruption between us and those who do not augment. For example, perplexity is creating or introducing an augmentation line by becoming an answers engine driven by AI. Google was iterating on its platform and missed the marker for when Perplexity launched. Perplexity, as a startup, has disrupted the biggest search engine on the planet. It can come from anywhere. And once augmentation is introduced, it becomes more and more exponential. The ball continues to move in new directions. So becoming AI first helps us foreshadow. It's the crystal ball, as the panel said before. It helps us understand and think about the unknown. Because when we think about the unknown, we unlock new opportunities. For example, IKEA reskilled about 8,500 customer service agents when it introduced Billy, its AI service platform. They reskilled those customer service agents to become interior design experts. And with Billy taking about 50% of first line customer service responses, these service reps, now interior designers, generated 1.3 billion in net new revenue. It's a new opportunity. And so I'll leave you with these items as a checklist. Embrace an augmented AI mindset. Reimagine your business as an AI-first company. Identify opportunities for AI integration. Get your data and models right. Invest in the right, right AI tools and platform. Embed AI at the core. These models will help you become predictive and eventually decisive. It isn't just about predicting which parts are going to fail, it's predicting where the markets are going to go. Start with your critical moments of truth, meaning in every area of your business, what is critical for your business to be successful in this new realm? And this is where we start to experiment with partnering with AI to help us make the decisions based on the unknown. Because there is a maturity model to this already. And those companies that are constantly experimenting are starting to pr prove that they can reimagine those operational models to become augmented and exponential. In closing, the role of an AI first leader, that's us, that's why we're here, is to create a future that would not have otherwise happened. It's a choice. We get to either be in front of innovation or be on the receiving end of someone else's innovation. And I choose that I want to be in front of it. We choose to be in front of it. Because great leaders not only challenge the status quo, great leaders look into the unknown. They also inspire and support the people around us who don't know what they don't know, by focusing on that uncertainty, the anxiety that comes with it, and the fear that moving into the unknown creates. This is your time. Thank you.